The dollar rebounded following today's news that the S&P cut its U.S. rating outlook. Wayne Thin is global head of emerging market strategy at Brown Brothers Harriman, and he joins us now from the New York Stock Exchange. Wynn, welcome back to Bloomberg's Hi. Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Well, even with that S&P news today, the dollar did post gains. Why? There's a lot of uh, conflicting forces out there. Obviously, when the, uh, the announcement hurt the tapes, bonds sold off, the dollar sold off. But you know, the people, the markets dug through the language. It was pretty clear that S&P was just uh, firing a shot across the bow. That is, put the U.S. on notice. Nothing's going to get done until after the 2012 election. In fact, S&P gave the U.S. until 2013. So really, it's a medium-term issue. It's not something that's too surprising. But I think closer to home, closer to the markets right now is all the trouble we're seeing in the periphery. Uh, Greece, yeah. Ireland, Portugal, Spain, back in the news. Well, when is history repeating itself? Moody's did make a similar move with U.S. Treasuries in the mid-90s, right? That's right, 96. Last time they were having trouble, I think, uh, raising the debt ceiling. Absolutely. The, the agencies can, can kind of insert themselves into the discussion, try and light a fire. And they're saying, look, to the U.S. policymakers, look, we, we understand, you know, fiscal policy is loose right now, but we need some kind of long-term uh, or medium-term sort of adjustment path, adjustment plan. And I think that's what the pressure will be on the U.S. policymakers. But again, nothing's yeah. going to get done really until, two, until after the 2012 election. That seems pretty clear. Well, were you surprised at the market reaction to the news today? We did see its effect across the board in equities, commodities, and in emerging markets. Yeah. Well, we're going to see these kind of gyrations in risk appetite. And if you ask me, the, the markets have probably been a little bit too sanguine. But all these risks from the Eurozone, from Japan, uh, from the Middle East, I mean, there's a lot of risk out there for sure. So this was sort of maybe a, a, a touch point for the markets to sort of stand back, take some profit, and a lot of really, you know, big rallying markets. Like you said, equities, yeah. commodities, uh, they've all been trading, you know, with a high correlation. And so yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to escape that. But well, well, sovereign debt news is having an effect overseas. We did see the euro fall against the yen. The cost of insuring Greek government debt rose to a record. How much pressure is the euro under right now? Well, I think that's one of the major factors on the euro. I mean, you know, a week ago, the euro was up. Uh, we had the ECB hike. Rates are heading higher in the Eurozone. People seem very comfortable with the Portuguese bailout. But you know, to me, the contagion has not been addressed. Uh, the borrowing costs for Greece, Ireland, Portugal all remain higher now than when they got the bailouts. Yeah. It's spraying to Spain. Even Belgium is coming under pressure. So the contagion is there. I'm looking at this from an EM perspective. And to me, it, sure. it, this whole debt thing is, is really... I still has mileage to go. I haven't seen anything that's a game stopper or, you know, sort of a firewall. Right. Uh, they're just crossing their fingers and hope to kick the can down the road. And well, when in our last minute, speaking of a game stopper, we also had news from Finland. Elections were held yesterday and support for the true Finns party jumped almost 15 points to 19 percent. Their party's leader says taxpayers shouldn't have helped rescue Greece or Ireland. How significant is that outcome to the bailout mechanism in the euro region? Well, that's a big debate. Uh, any kind of agreement in the Eurozone needs unanimous approval. So right now we're going through sort of the numbers and looking to see if the, if the, if the likely coalition can still push through a package without the support of the true Finns. I'm not sure yet. I think it's still up in the air. There's going to be some horse trading. But for sure, it tells you there's bailout of fatigue. Not, not just in Japan, uh, I'm sorry, in Germany, Finland, all these other countries. How long can they continue with austerity, yeah. bailouts, slow growth, unemployment? It's, it's, it's something that's going to, I think, the political... Uh, situation is really what's going to be the breaking point. And, you know, yeah. how much, can it, how much uh, blood can you squeeze from a stone? It, not much. Win Thing, Global Head of Emerging Market Strategy at Brown Brothers Harriman, joining us from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Win, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks. Always a pleasure to be here.